Well, talking about um, things that we're right about, I think we want to take a little bit of a victory lap, right, Matt? Yeah. Um, so, was it last December? That I, I think it was last? the end of 2021. It was our big one for the year. Yeah, we haven't done um, the segment in a while. We could. Abbott was an honorary bump steer, but he's sort of like always in there for us. Yeah, I know. I feel like we just started doing Elon Musk every uh, yeah. <laughs> every time. Um, but yeah, so for our the bump steer of the year, it was uh, Pramila Jayapal, leader of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, for her decision to. I forget exactly the uh, congressional maneuvering now that basically sunk the Build Back Better bill. Um, but basically folded uh, and said we can trust. She supported two track, right? Two tracks, right? Exactly. So that's why we got the bipartisan infrastructure bill that no one gives an f- absolute fuck about, and uh, we did not get Build Back Better, and that was thanks to her strategy. And and we got a lot of flack f- for that. I mean, I'll just say it again. You know, I'm a I'm a democratic socialist. Like when I think about my politics, I'm not really thinking about the larger progressives. I see there's plenty of opportunities to do work with them, but I don't know. I don't I don't see them as necessarily like sitting on the bench with me on my team. Right? They we can be friendly, but um, you know, right. there's a distance from that. But we got a lot of people who were getting mad at us for saying, "Oh, why would you come at Jaya Paul? You know, she's doing so much. She's so clearly on her side, and we shouldn't be like you know cementing any kind of discord." Um, but there was a pretty big announcement today um, that I think uh, you know should make people think twice and prove that again. Matt and I were right about how deep those commitments are to a kind of general, like again, not even socialist or democratic socialist politics, but just a kind of continuation of the massively popular and massively successful, even though it didn't end up winning the White House, but it's still a very important part of the political, um, you know, mosaic right now, which is the Bernie Sanders political movement. Yeah. Uh, and so I don't know, like, uh, this is very similar to um, Nancy Pelosi uh, endorsing Cuellar, uh, right? And I think, like, the overall lesson is, yeah, like... Oh, well, can we tell... Well, people might not know the news yet. The news? There's yeah, about the, no, 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 about the Progressive Caucus, wh- why we're mad about them. They endorsed oh. against Nina Turner um, in the Democratic primary um, right. and instead, you know, are promoting just like the most typical kind of soft on the vast majority of progressive issues, centrist kind of Democrat against somebody like Nina Turner, who is very clearly two foot um, on, on the side of the Bernie Sanders movement. Yeah, Chantel Brown uh, was pitched herself as unlike Nina Turner who called Joe Biden the shit sandwich or whatever she called him. Uh, uh, Brown's going to have Biden's back. And what is she doing? What is she doing in her short time in Congress? She's uh, undermining Joe Biden's efforts to reinstitute the Iran deal, uh, renegotiate it. And so, and that would not be a surprise to anybody who knew where her funding for campaign was coming from. Uh, in large part to Democratic Majority for Israel. Uh, Remember that name because they're going to be a big problem in in progressive elections going forward. Uh, And yeah, it's it's really gross. And like, I mean, I think the thing with making Jayapal that uh, bumps here is what is the CPC worth? Like, what what do you get? What's the point of this at this point? Oh, you're muted, David. I'm trying to find a, a, a tweet from David Sirota, but um, it's not coming up, but I'll paraphrase him. I, I hope I'm getting this accurately. Oh, he might have deleted that one. It was spicy. It was... Uh, it, <laughs> okay. It was, then uh, maybe, yeah, this might, find it. It, Yeah, it's like, this might be Pramila Jayapal selling her, selling out to... You know, to get a committee appointment that they won't be able, um, that she won't enjoy long because they're about to get smoked in uh, the upcoming uh, midterm elections. I mean, look, um, I think that... Um, you could make one uh, criticism here of, of how the segment has gone. And that's like, you know, you got to share the blame a little bit. I think that's a hundred percent accurate um, that, you know, this is a big loss for the congressional progressive caucus in general. Um, and, you know, again, we've never been people who have sat around and argue like, you know, the people who are on the periphery for us, is like AOC and like Bowman, um, you know, and, and Ilhan, right? Um, the other people who are in the CPC, you know, I don't consider them necessarily to be parts of this movement. And this is like a very, very apparent stabbing of in the back of that movement. is, And it's showing that post-Bernie Sanders, 
showing that post Bernie Sanders without the viability of those presidential campaigns, right? And with the viability comes risk if you're somebody in the Democratic Party who's supporting Bernie. Um, but it also gives you a bit of a shield because, you know, you can point to how popular it was, right? Without having that kind of event of a, you know, Democratic national primary like that, you're seeing what characters, what people in that, that organization um, how far they're willing to go and how quickly they are to retreat, um, you know, into the arms of the established uh, Democratic Party. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It is it is sort of like, uh, I guess, a victory lap for our predictive powers. But it's a very bad on one. <laughs> and it is. A ex yeah, exactly. Um, oh, no, no. He didn't delete his tweet just so he? we can have okay, the record. Good. Let me put it up since I... I, I I uh, I brought it up. Um, right. Just give me one moment. <laughs> Let's be yeah. clear. This is very likely uh, Jaya Paul selling out the entire movement because of her unbridled ambitions to get a fancy <laughs> but meaningless leadership title among a House Dam caucus that will be obliterated in midterms. A total betrayal on every level. And I, I think that yeah, that's a go. fair way to put that. Um, I mean, you know, this is a good reason to find ways to, you know, continue to support, uh, you know, Nina Turner. Um, you know, Nina Turner is, you know, somebody who I, I certainly support as a congressional candidate. She's somebody, though, you know, who is sort of like on that one foot in, one foot out in the sense that she's not necessarily a socialist. And we talk about the problems with our elected officials, um, you know, who are associated with the movement. Um, yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, so keep that in, in, in your head. Uh, I, I don't mean to, uh, you know, to not say don't support or anything like that, but just, you know, in the terms of, I don't know, accuracy in like my kind of congressional opinion and how we should think about congressional politics as socialists, you know, understand that going into it. Uh, but right. no doubt about it for the Bernie Sanders movement that we all supported and so many people became politicized from. This is somebody who is your tribune. This is somebody who has, you know, at per a lot of personal risk gone out there and fought for these things. And this is somebody who you would certainly want um, to have uh, in Congress, if anything else, for the fact that she's not a coward like a lot of these other people who've shown themselves to be kind of political social climbers. Um, and, you know, they like to support things that are popular. You know, and remember, the party is against Medicare for all, despite the fact that it is immensely popular. And I support and think it's it's a prerequisite for any kind of association or endorsement. Um, let it be a DSA one or even just like for people who are the left that you support Medicare for all. Um, but also remember that, you know, those things are like so morally easy and so clearly popular. Um, that, you know, just because there's so much pushback in the Democratic Party against it, to think that people who say they support it, you know, have big backbones and are willing to, you know, to stand up when when the rubber hits the road. Right. And we're seeing um, the serious lack there. The answer here, just, uh, you know, so people don't think that this segment is about getting doomer and, you know, black pilled and, and sitting out of politics. The solution here is we need to be cultivating our own talent. We need to be in vigor, like involving yourselves in movements. This is like, if you're somebody who watches a lot of politics, right? Um, and, you know, campaign for Bernie Sanders, um, but you're not a part of an organization, this is a real moment when you should find a way to get involved. You don't have to donate 100% of your time or anything like that. But this shows that, you know, we're not just going to get it through, you know, an invigorated progressive media sphere. Right. We're not yeah. just going to get it, um, you know, because everybody's going to wake up one day. We're only going to get it through real organizing and making those people accountable to us because the CPC, uh, the Congressional Progressive Caucus, is not accountable to you. Right. Yeah. Why they're going to do this shit. And we can be mad at them. Rightfully so. We can criticize them. Rightfully so. But the solution has to be a commitment to engagement in real engagement with your community and through an, an organization, because that's the only way you're going to get out of this constant cycle of excitement and disappointment. I agree. And hopefully we'll have a good, um, uh, um, a good exponent of this independent socialist electoral strategy in the future. Um, so, uh, but that's all I want to tease at this point. Oh, hell yeah. Well, y'all, um, this was a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> I like to have Kurt on every week. He was great. And, yeah. um, um, we got a lot of fun stuff coming up in the post game though. We're going to hang out as we usually do. We're going to take a look at some very, very frightening images from Elon Musk's, um, uh, gigafactory rodeo. 
Um, we got a Saki clip. I think we got a couple other things. And as always, we got your voicemails, uh, which we can throw up that number here. Remember, you know, if you're not a patron, you won't be able to hear your answers or anything like that, but you can leave us a voicemail. Um, and we play those during the post game. Um, we also answer people's questions from the discord. So come on, uh, you know, come and join us in the post game and, uh, hang out with us for a little bit. And this Sunday, you're not going to want to miss it. Bar none, probably are one of our most popular guests. Um, and I, and, and now I would say LR crew, a little into church. Yeah. Um, was uh, on the program, and we're going to release a conversation that we had with her about socialists and liberal rights. Um, it was a really insightful um, and exciting conversation. And you know, whenever you see, whenever I see Lillian, it's like click. You want, you're going to want to see that. So sign up yeah. at Patreon.com/slash Left Reckoning uh, to get access to that this Sunday. And uh, we'll see y'all in just a little bit uh, for the post game. Peace.